Uh, today, Mr. O'Farrell and I jointly would like us to adjourn in memory of Harvey Milk, the LGBT elected official, civil rights leader, member of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, uh, who was killed along with Mayor George Moscone 40 years ago today. Uh, 40 years ago today, Los, or San Francisco Board of Supervisors President Diane Feinstein stepped to a microphone in San Francisco City Hall and announced that Mayor Moscone and Supervisor Milk had been killed. And the suspect was County Supervisor, City Supervisor Dan White, who had resigned a couple days before and decided he wanted his job back and came to City Hall armed with a gun an angry white man and killed the mayor and the supervisor. It was a political earthquake in San Francisco and it was uh, uh, an emotional earthquake uh, around the country for the emerging LGBT community. It had happened just 10 days after the Jonestown massacre when San Francisco was still reeling from that. Uh, and it happened in the wake of a rollback and an aggressive push by the Christian right of uh, LGBT civil rights in the country. Anita Bryant had just led a major charge in Miami uh, and Dade County to repeal an LGBT civil rights bill there. Uh, and there were initiatives around the country when Harvey was elected. He'd served for 11 months uh, before he was killed. And um, he was, um, uh, you, you'll, you'll see if you hear or, or see him, uh, he was a charismatic guy, uh, a, a funny guy, uh, sort of an outsider and a, and a troublemaker. He was a, a, a populist. He was an advocate for neighborhoods. Um, he was a huge coalition builder. He built the first real coalition between organized labor and the LGBT community. Um, and he was a real LGBT icon, the second LGBT elected official in the country, uh, first in California and certainly the most celebrated uh, nationwide. Um, his, uh, his death came just a few weeks after he had helped lead the battle to defeat the Briggs Initiative, which um, was led by a state legislator here and it would have prohibited uh, gays and lesbians from be being teachers in the state of California. And he went around the state and he debated Senator Briggs uh, who was saying that you know, if you had a gay teacher, you'd have gay kids. And Harvey's retort was that if, uh, if children uh, mimic their teachers, we'd have a hell of a lot more nuns running around. Um, the LGBT community won that, and Harvey's leadership was, was a big part of that. He knew he was going to get killed. When he got elected, he recorded on the tape recorder his last will and testament. And uh, he said he anticipated being killed, and that if... Uh, if a bullet entered his brain, may that bullet uh, open and shatter every closet door in the country. Um, but that's not his most famous speech. Uh, his most famous speech was uh, his hope speech. He gave it in various uh, uh, venues and various occasions, starting uh, with a gay pride parade. He always said that he knew that he meant more to people outside of San Francisco. Uh, and he always kept in mind uh, a proverbial kid from Altoona, Pennsylvania, who had called him and was desperate to, to try to escape a, a conservative small town. And so he gave this, this hope speech time and time again. And we're going to just do a very short clip of it, and then Mr. O'Farrell will speak. Somewhere in Des Moines or San Antonio, there's a young gay person who all of a sudden realizes that she or he is gay, knows that if the parents find out, they'll be tossed out of the house. The classmates would taunt the child, and the Anita Bryans and John Briggs are doing their bit on TV, and that child had several options. Staying in a closet, suicide, and then one day that child might open a paper and it says homosexual elected in San Francisco, and there are two new options. The option is to go to California, Stay in San Antonio and fight. Two days after I was elected, I got a phone call, and the voice was quite young. It was from Altoona, Pennsylvania, and the person said, thanks. And you've got to elect gay people so that that young child and the thousands upon thousands like that child know that there's hope for a better world. There's hope for a better tomorrow. Without hope, not only gays, but those blacks, 
the Asians, the disabled, the seniors, the S's, the S's, without hope, the S's give up. I know that you cannot live on hope alone, but without it, life is not worth living. And you, and you, and you, you've got to give them hope. Thank you very much. I, I was 10 years old when he was killed, uh, struggling with my own awakening awareness of who I was. Uh, and I grew up in the Massachusetts version of Altoona, Pennsylvania, uh, a small Catholic community of uh, 10,000 people in Massachusetts. And um, I remembered Anita Bryant and what she was doing. And I knew when Harvey was elected. And I knew when he was killed. And uh, he gave me hope. Mm -hmm.